I'm going to fast forward it to this year, 2014. Although he's a New York Yankee, um, many, many players say that have played with him that Derek Jeter is not just a great player, but he's a gentleman. Um, he just retired. What did you think of seeing Derek Jeter on the TV as a player? I thought exactly what you just said. As a matter of fact, other than just having respect for the old timers, you know, DiMaggio and all of that stuff, I, I, I can truthfully say that I got the way I liked them tremendously. I never saw him doing the thing that looked like he was putting on anything, though no, I had the greatest respect for him. He did it. I was glad to see him get the, the acclaim that he did. He did it for 20 years in New York, and I think, right, one thing that besides seeing the numbers, if you just watched it, he did it consistently. Yeah. But like Bill said, some people, uh, who would believe that you'd come up on your last time at bat in baseball and drive in the winning run? I mean, I know if you were the greatest thing since post toasters, that wouldn't help. You know, and, and, he, and he deserved it, and it wound up good. But I was, I've been a Jeter person, but I'm still not a Yankee person. I, oh. The best compliment I hear from traveling around the country is they'll, they'll say, I hate the Yankees, but I like Derek Jeter. Yeah, I bet. It's, uh, I wouldn't doubt that at all. It's, it's quite a compliment. I, I would say to you, uh, Bill, if you can, Donna, um, you were a pitcher in that generation. You know, and you were up in the big leagues basically a decade. So you were on the mound facing lots of guys, but not too many that got 3,400 hits. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, of Derek Jeter? What stands out in your mind from all those players? Well, the way the press is today, I'm, I, I never, I don't know Derek Jeter, but he's got to be a heck of a guy to play in a big market like that and never have a blemish on his reputation or what he stood for or what he did, his actions were always good. You know, whatever he did, I mean, it was hustle or just what, or fulfilling, whatever he did, he did it the right way and never got accused or, you know, for palimony suits or lawsuits yep. of any kind. He was always in the limelight doing good stuff. Um, uh, let me ask you a question so I can have the people visualize. When you were in the big leagues, were you a left-hander or a right-hander? Right. So you're a right-hander. Derek Jeter's a right-hander. I know that you faced different guys that were in the Hall of Fame. And for the moment, you said, well, this is what I'm going to do. If you were just visualizing, although you didn't face them, what in the world do you really think, if you're putting yourself in that situation, what do you do when, as a big league pitcher when Derek Jeter comes up to the box? What would you do? It depends on if he's leading off or, or somebody who was in scoring position. Right. Being a reliever, I have to think about, you know, how, how I pitch, because usually the winning run late in the ball game is on, if he gets on base and I've got to pitch somebody differently. You know, how, how many outs if I got an open base at first? Sure. A lot of things will come into play, but if he's leading off an inning, for instance. That's what I'm asking. I would probably go right at him and hopefully he hit a. 380 foot fly ball or something. You know, I mean. When you say right at him, fastball inside? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I have to rely on my, my bullpen coach's index cards to, to tell me what he's, how, what he's been hitting lately. I mean, you know, all that, all that comes into play. He might be pulling off the ball this week. He might be going the other way next week. He might, I mean, the hitters change, so you have to change with them. So I don't know. I, I, it's hard to answer that question. What have, in your time, was there a hitter, right, um, that stands out? Uh, I guess that you faced uh, or were around. You were around Pete Rose, for God's sakes. Um, that's a guy that got four thousand hits. Nobody could get him out, or nobody could get him out consistently. Who who was the greatest? Not home run hitter. But who was the greatest mm. hitter that 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 well, you I faced? Have, I'm sure there's a lot, but I mean, um, two stand out as one is uh, 
Craig Biggio. Right, you're right. Uh, he you he hit double after to double after to double off me. Right center, left center, right center. He was a gap hitter and he hit gap. He found the gap all the time on me. And the other one was um, Mark Lemke of the Braves. Lemke, really? A career 240 hitter maybe, but I bet you. I bet you I added 20 points to his uh, batting average <laughs> Would, every year. You know, he's bringing up those names because you got this TV here in South Carolina. When you would watch every now and then, your son would be on TV. Were you sitting there thinking that you should do this, you should do Because you're a pitcher. How can you help oh, yeah. now? What were you thinking? I'm sitting there thinking I'll be so glad when this is over. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking. He changed my whole attitude. I got to where I can't, I can't watch anything. I don't watch any football game all the way through. The baseball, all I want to, is who won and when did you go in? And I just sit here at night. I get in my Cadillac, and I say Cadillac because I had one at the time. It, when he was in Pittsburgh, and I could get WKDK, that was the sure. radio station. Sure, that is. And I could pull that car out in the middle of that field out there and then turn the radio on and use it to pick up. Pittsburgh pretty good, and you just sit out there in the, in the first end, the second end, the third end, and then the fourth end, the fifth end, and then every now and then say, well, the bullpen, I said, all right, here we go. So, bullpen, though, yeah, guy hit a double, double play, well, that's over, you sit back down, and it's sixth end, seventh end, and it's just torture, and waiting on the for Bill either to go in or, or just don't get up tonight or something, do something rather than me sitting there. And I got where I can't, I just don't watch anything, any sport from beginning to end. That's the one of the few things I like about my television, they got all these shows to show everything all the time. And if I can just skip around and find out what the score is here today or what the final That's score, good. without having to go through the, when we go to Atlanta, and one Sunday we went down and Bill went in and we, we left that day, I believe. We had a fight. It was Sunday afternoon and the Cincinnati pitcher hit somebody. Bill Gullickson. Gully. Yeah, we wound up all out there in the field tackling each other and Bill wound up in the game. And, and it, it's a long time. You just, you just sit there. I agonized. When he was in the game as his father, would you be on pins and needles? Absolutely. I didn't would I not even go. When he played little league ball, I used to go but his mother would go. His mother raised his children. Uh huh. And I would go and and watch him. You didn't want to be a distraction uh, to him. No, no, I didn't want I wasn't for I, I, I didn't want to get be distracted. Myself, I, it just drives me nuts. I mean, I can't. It's one thing of doing it yourself, and then, but then having to watch somebody do it that, uh, that you want to do well. And he pissed against Clemson one night down there at Carolina, and beat Carol, beat Clemson, beat Carolina four to one. And the guy that hit a home run off of him was a guy that played Tim second Tuffle. base for the Mets for years. Sure, Tim Tuffle of the Mets. Tim Tuffle. There's another Clemson guy that went to the big to leagues. Major League. There's a bunch of them left Clemson and went to the Major League. But, uh, but the agony, just the agony of going through it is just something I can't, I can't stand. Did, did you, when he would do well um, and then the game is over, could you re relax and just be well, when I was playing, or when, when he, he was, was playing? playing? Well, yeah, you could, yeah, you just say, "Well, I'm, boy, I'm glad that's over." Did you, did you, did you relax to the point where you could take a deep breath and just be proud of him? Well, oh, we, my relationship with my children has been different because I'm different, mm -hmm. and I wasn't brought up in a huggy. Snuggy, kissy, holy. I understand. Type environment. I didn't know anything about that. Sure. And I could get on these kids and be the nastiest SOB you ever saw, and then go in there and sit on that sofa in our living room all night, wondering why I had to be that way. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were never, we, we were never 
in all the time. You know, you see the daddies and the kids hanging around. And I get that it. Not me. Uh, just, just even though this. that didn't mean that I didn't care, but I just I didn't it. know what to do. Living. It. I didn't know what to do. You were making a living as a father, making money to well, pay bills. I was, that's what I thought you were supposed to do. And I used to tell them, if you're looking, if you're looking for something, to go talk to your mom, <laughs> because she's good with children. She's good with people. Sure. It's a sign of the times. I was raised by my grandparents, yeah. and my grandmother was born in 1910. Yeah. My grandfather was born in 1899. Yeah. So when you talk, I hear, um, I go, sometimes when you're talking, I go back to my childhood, yeah. and I hear my grandmother and grandfather talking. Yeah. Your answers aren't just you. Your answers are a sign of the times. That's the way things work. Well, you're a product of, it's, it's either environment or, what's the other word? Uh, uh, your DNA. Yeah. Yep. But, uh, and, and uh, Rosemary is just one of those people, she's just open and gets along with everybody. Knows what to say or gets by with it when she don't know what to say. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a combination that worked. Uh, you like to think some of it was all right, <laughs> but uh, my children, my boys, and and my my boys are primarily the result of of her motherhood, because she's a good mother, and she's good with children, and she's good with people. Oh, and she just treat me right. It'd be all right. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah, I know you are. But she is just a people's person. I mean, she, she's just, out, just very outgoing anytime, anywhere. Well, it's i uh, I'll tell you what, it's a testament to the Landrum name and the Landrum household. It's not one kid, two kids, it's four kids well adjusted. And uh, both of you were blessed with good enough health to be here all these years That's later. That's true. That is true. That is one thing that, that I have been so fortunate that we've never had a major illness and anytime you pick up the TV anymore or read a paper yeah. there's just something tragic happened uh, we have it here in Columbia just like you've got it in your in your hometown there's somebody yeah. riding down the road with three children all three of them dead I, uh, I know we, we haven't we haven't had any of that it's been Absolutely lucky. I am just happy that I was fortunate enough to be sure. able to come along and play Sandlot Baseball, American Legion Baseball, Pro Baseball at the Class D level, B level, <laughs> Double A level, Triple A level in a very short time, two short times in the Major Leagues, and I'm thankful for it. I've just been, been fortunate. But as far as telling you my favorite moment, I don't believe you can do that. It's a good answer. I just don't believe that you can pick out one thing in your life that's absolutely your favorite play or your favorite game or any of that. It's a good I, answer. I, and, and that's what I say. I say I'm just unable to, to, to define it that narrowly. Joe Landrum, sitting in your living room in Columbia, South Carolina, was worth every mile of the drive. And I thank you sincerely so much for welcoming me into your house a second time. I had a great time the first time too. Well, I appreciate you coming by. I really do. And I've enjoyed what we've done. But it may be another long, no, it won't be a long time. But it'll, I just have gotten away from this for so long that I, you forget uh, circumstances and years and things that used to look bad to you now look good and vice versa. And you just have a different outlook, and you forget a lot of things. I've forgotten a lot of things. Well, this is a, a and fact. you won't be gone. You won't be in Lexington County for I'll think of something. I wish I'd have told him that while he was here. Thank you very much. Uh, you are you are a great com communicator yourself. Well, I appreciate your. Holy your I couldn't take all that stuff.